Um, the question of like, how do you ensure that you're building the right thing or how do you pivot quickly? Um, a key focus of product management is thinking about the minimal viable product. Um, some people say the minimal lovable product because sometimes M MVP can imply something very bare bones and not thought through. Um, some people that hold that perspective would say you want the um, smallest possible prototype to determine whether or not there's value. And if there is value, keep adding value to it and layer on components. But if there isn't value, throw it away. Um, there, some hold the perspective of minimal lovable product because you shouldn't ship something that's duct taped together because some companies uh, in a desire to you know chase down a lot of different opportunities they may never come back to that MVP and so it can be discouraging when you ship something with duct tape uh, and you never get the opportunity to like double down on that so there's MVP MLP they're very similar it's a different uh, vantage point on kind of like the same deliverable um, and so what you do is you find what is the smallest way to deliver initial value to understand whether or not customers will see value in it too. Will they pay for it? Will they sign up for it? And then based off of that, you're going to, well, you're going to also add tracking to understand like, are they using it? How long are they using it? Should they be able to use it very quickly? Or do you want them to spend hours with that thing that you just built? Um, so time on site, Facebook wants people to spend hours on their content. But if you build a simple tool like, um, you know, pairing your AirPods, you want that to be as quick and as efficient as possible. And so depending on how you're trying to support the customer, uh, you may want speed and efficiency and then others that sell ads, right? They want time on site, they want long sessions. And so you have to think through, you know, what the ultimate goal is, kind of what that North Star is for the product. Um, and so as a product manager, you have to often think, and even a product designer, you have to think about what the North Star is for what you're trying to build. And so let's say with AirPods, you want a easy way to connect to your music without getting tangled up in your cords, and you want it to be as intuitive as possible to join multiple Apple devices without an issue. And so those might, might be like three primary North Stars for AirPods as an example. And so that as you go through and you build out the hardware in this case, um, you wanna make sure that you are keeping those elements at the forefront of your mind as you build out, you know, what is the joining technology going to look like? Okay, does it have to be able to join to all Apple products the day it launches, or do we just connect it to iPhones? And then over time, we're gonna add iPads, Apple Watches, et cetera. And so that's kind of that difference between MVP, um, right, that very first product, and then what when you layer on that value over time to ensure that it plays well with the whole ecosystem, which ultimately makes the $200 Ear, earbuds, um, AirPods more, you know, impactful. So, um, so when I think about North Stars, um, some product people use that term, but it's I think it's gaining in popularity because it's a, this thing that when you're at an impasse at, with engineers or with designers and you're not sure how to proceed. Um, what you should do is go back to the North Star that the team has agreed to, like what is the real heart of what we're looking to solve. And if it, do, if it goes away from that, then that doesn't get us to our purpose. And so that's why we call it the, the North Star, to ensure that um, when you're at all these different forks, you're making the right path or the right pro uh, choice to ensure that you're making the most efficient progress towards your goal as possible. Any questions on that? What was the most viable? Uh, minimal viable minimal. product. So that is called an MVP. Um, and when you think about um, establishing an MVP, you can think about, or you can ask yourself the question, do we want to simply ship this to the public um, in a very, very, you know, bare bones form? Or do we want to have a private beta, which is, you know, a sub-segment of your customers that are very loyal, or they might be super users of your product that are willing to give you feedback. And so sometimes for some a project that's really risky, you might actually have a private beta program where you say to 100 or maybe to 1,000 customers, we're going to give you early 
early access to this. It's not gonna be a perfect product, but what we wanna do is we wanna understand you know, where it falls down, what's missing, what did you hope would happen when we gave this to you, um, so that you can increase your confidence and reduce your risk in the project when you go ship it to millions of people. And so that's, um, for larger and riskier projects, you often want to have a beta. You might even have an alpha, which is like even more bare bones um, than that. And then again, you're, all throughout that, you're either interviewing those people, you are surveying them, um, you're running polls to ensure that like the design aligns um, with, again, customer expectations, that it's intuitive versus um, being entrenched in your own ego of like, I built it perfect, mm -hmm. there's no way that this could be wrong. Again, checking in, um, you know, what confused you about this design? What was missing? Um, and, and ensuring that all you know, sides of the spectrum on the accessibility, ages, um, you know, level of tech familiarity, you have to also understand like, what's the key customer type that I'm serving? Do they have a college degree? Do they, have they been using tech their whole life? Or are they new to tech? And so I need to ensure that this design is as bulletproof as possible um, because everyone comes to, to a product with different perspectives. And so, you would be shooting yourself in the foot to say, well, of course everyone's gonna figure this out. So that's why you have those interviews, the surveys, closed beta programs to see um, what did people love about it? What did they loathe? What was missing? What confused them? So that, you know, this confusing area, you can, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna work on this part of the application a bit more because it doesn't make any sense to our customers.